And John Dickinson, 95-7, the game reporter. He was there Saturday. He's there tonight. He's there all weekend, and then he's coming back to the Bay to cover this series. J.D., what's going on, man? What's going on, fellas? Yeah, and pre- and post-game host, 6 o'clock, Warriors Live from Golden yeah. One Center, and uh, ah, post-game bad. after the game as well. So, yeah, yeah looking Let's forward to it. All right, you filled in the cracks. My <laughs> bad, buddy. Um, hey, uh, what are we doing here? Criticizing Clay for throwing a pass to Wiggins. Unless you're, you think he should have taken the two. If anything, Clay should have made a couple of more passes in in mm. game one, and the Warriors might have got a couple of more layups instead of a couple of clunked shots that went back the other way to to propel Kings runs that helped them two or three different times hang in a game where the Warriors were always on the brink of really taking control. I don't think they ever fully took control, but I had no problem with Clay kicking that one to Wiggins again. I think the bigger problem was was Clay just you know taking some bad shots and the Warriors as a whole taking some bad shots in that game that that really put them in some tough spots where the Kings they kind of let the Kings off the hook I think mm. uh, you know one of my biggest keys to this series the number one key is shot selection for the Warriors if the and, I, and I've said this and, I, and it comes from watching Sacramento if you run your offense and and make them defend you can get a layup almost any time you want. And I think the Warriors got baited into, hey, they shoot threes, we shoot threes. Hey, we're better than them at that. We've done this for 10 years. We can get away with it. We're, we're just better. And if you do that and you miss, that is the, that's the way. If the Warriors are going to lose this series, guys, they're going to lose it because they take too many bad shots that miss and the Kings turn that into points. That, that to me, is even above the rebounds, which obviously have been talked about, it's above Curry's minutes. It's above the free throw shooting or Fox, you know, going off as he did in Game One. They have to take better shots against this Sacramento team if they're going to win this series. And if they do it, I think they win the series. Jay, wow! And the beauty of you, Jay, is you let me nerd out and be me, weird out in regard to the uniforms, watching the games back. But Jay, I got it. I wasn't in the house like you. I watched that game almost three times because of the ambiance. I told Steiny I didn't know we had the great Jerry Reynolds on from SAC. I was insinuating maybe it could be a warrior takeover. Before we get to the nitty-gritty, can you speak to just how amped and electric that was? Because it felt like Oracle with the Warriors and we believe. It, it was on that level. It was off the charts. It was everything... Boston was last year, I think, in the finals, or Cleveland, or it reminded me of Oklahoma City, and, and as somebody that grew up in Sacramento and, and covered the, the Kings in, in the heyday, my early years coming up in, in the business, it, it reminded me of 2002-2003 Arco. I mean, it really did. I mean, the, it, it felt like a game where the fans here... We're waiting for 17 years for the, wow. for the moment. And there was a lot of that just joy of, hey, the team is good again, but also a little bit of a, a little bit of an edge of, hey, nobody's respecting this team, even though they're the three seed and, 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 you know, this team's pretty good and, and can maybe, you know, have some action in, in beating the Warriors. I was stunned, guys, that it wasn't 80 20 or 90 10 in terms of a percentage. It, you had to really look around to find Warrior fans. I mean, it was 95-5 or 97-3 if you want to go to, like, a percentage, which I, I'm not sure how they did it, uh, but but the Kings fans showed up and, and showed out, and, and there weren't a lot of Warrior fans in, in the building. And it was, I, I'll say this, it was, I think, as true of a road game environment that the Warriors have had at any point in the last 10 years of, the, of their run. John Dickinson joining us wow. on 95-7 The Game. Uh, he was in SAC Saturday. He's in SAC now. Uh, he's covering this series and every subsequent series uh, if the Warriors can advance. When I when I think of that game last night, obviously Fox was two nights ago. Fox was a problem, 29 in the in the second half. What, what can the Warriors do better against him? I, I don't even know that it is necessarily do anything better against him. I, I think they're comfortable with him going takeover mode a little bit. I think w- what they would tell you is they got to do the same job they did against Sabonis again. They have to take away the, the Trey Lyles, 
you know, wide open threes that really put an imprint on the game. And they can't let Monk go for 32 and get to the free throw line 14 times. So, yeah, they, they got to be better, I think, at, at preventing Fox from getting in the, in the lane. It's easier said than done. He, he, I think, started to do in the third quarter when the game was starting to get away from the Kings and the Warriors were on the brink of, of control. He did what he's done a lot in the fourth quarter. He just took it. They ran more pick and roll up high, and he just, he just attacked. And he's so good at getting in that in-between zone of, I'm not taking the three, and if you come up on me, I'm going to get by you, but not all the way to the rim to where you can maybe challenge the shot, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up from, from about 10, 12 feet. And that, that's his money shot, and, and, and he was able to do that. And I think the Warriors, it seemed like they were a little caught off guard maybe by how explosive and, and speedy he is. Uh, I think it does play to something that I talked about a lot last week where at times the Kings do have the ability in this series to make the Warriors look a little old. And I think he did make <laughs> some of their guys look a little bit old in in game one. But but I, I really do think the Warriors are comfortable if Fox wants to, to be a, a, a dominant volume shooter and scorer in this series they gotta they gotta contest a little better in that in between game and maybe try to push him out he hit some threes i think four in the second half with her which hurt it but but i think they're more concerned about not letting the others go off and if he scores 40 that's fine he'll steal the headlines from the sacramento side but the warriors think they can walk out of the building with a win J.D., you let me know how much you, uh, owe you because I borrowed your line. We had a caller call in about Kaminga, and I told Steiny, you know, I've been a big Kaminga advocate. I was disappointed, and I'm seeing too much smiling from him as if the game is easy, but yet he played 10 minutes, game one, didn't get a rebound, and I'm not going to come in here and say free Kaminga, but what did you make of only his 10 minutes and – his lack of rebounding because watching, you know, I use Westbrook as an example last night. You can do other things to to get more playing time. Mm-hmm. And Russell showed us that. But I want could stop smiling and do some stuff. Yeah, look, uh, the, yeah, he's got to rebound more if he's going to be on the floor. He's got to play with with a higher. I, I thought and I'm not I don't want to single out Kaminga in this, but but it, you bringing him up made me think of this. I think. There were a number of Warriors players. I think Jordan Poole was one. I think Kaminga was one. I think Clay, who we mentioned earlier, was was one. I think even Wiggins was one. Where there were just two or three plays, whether it was a turnover or a bad shot, that that, that just you just can't have. And 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 I think the Warriors had four or five players that had this. I think Curry, right off the bat, he throws a terrible pass that gets picked mm. off and, and goes the other way in the first play of the game as the Warriors are bringing like there were there were four or five players that I think had two or three plays that were just you just can't have that were just losing plays and and you know you can have maybe one of those a game and you add it up over four five six different players and you know they're like whether it's a wild drive or it's a bad shot or it's a turnover there was just too much of that, and I think it falls into the category of needing to be a little bit more buttoned up. As far as Kaminga and the minutes, I don't know how anybody who watched Game 1 can look at, at Jonathan Kaminga's game in Game 1 and think he needs to play more. In mm. fact, I go the other way. If I'm looking for adjustments, and I'm, look, I'm playing 8 if I'm Steve Kerr tonight. Kaminga's a DNP coach's decision, and we'll have to see about Poole, who was going through his shoot around, you know, shooting at post shoot around, and he's still listed as questionable. Uh, talking to Rick Celebrini and all of that, trying to make sure he's good to go. Uh, and so we'll wait and see on that. I, I think the Warriors are going to have to hope Poole is uh, available to play. Otherwise, they, they got some, some issues, I think, in, in ways that they weren't accounting for. But let's just say Poole plays. If Poole plays, I would play eight. And I would cut Kaminga out of the rotation, and I would use that as a means to play DiVincenzo more than the 19 minutes that he played. I would use that to play maybe Wiggins a little bit more if, if physically he's up to being, being able to play a little bit more. And I think maybe even Jordan Poole, if he's healthy enough, could play a little bit more. If, if this is you know getting down to, to brass tacks, really desperate to get this win, 
I, I think you I think you go shorter in the rotation. I know Steve Kerr hates doing that early in series. Uh, maybe it, you know, does it show a little bit of panic? But I, I just think Kaminga wasn't. You know, I think he can have a role in this series for the Warriors, but he has to play with his game in a box that he too often has shown he's incapable of doing if he's only going to play 10, 12 minutes. And so, to me, if I'm the coach. He's he's sitting on the bench unless there's an emergency situation because I'm going with the eight guys that I know I can fully trust for every single minute of the 48 in this one tonight. John Dickinson joining us on 95.7 The Game. He's in Sacramento at the Golden One Center. Uh, J.D., you were at Warrior Shootaround today. Uh, you talk to you know the players and Steve Kerr. What's what's the vibe? And look, you you've been around this team in the playoffs for the better part of the dynasty. Did was there anything different today, or uh, anything that you, that you could tell was different than playoffs past? They are extremely loose, extremely focused, and I'll give you this: I don't know if you guys mentioned this from from seeing it on social media. Shoot around opens to the media, right? Curtain opens. You can go out into the bowl, watch guys shoot. It was Kevon Looney and Jonathan Kaminga were the players who who spoke. You go out to shoot around, and what's bumping on the speakers? E40. Yeah. Choices. <laughs> yep. Wow. Nope. Yep. Clay and it Thompson. was and and it, they were and yeah and Clay Thompson yelled out bump that bump yep. that E40 and like so there was a Wow. There was a they wanted to make sure that everybody knew that that they had E40s back and this was, you know, the, and that he has the bays back and it was just a little bit of a little bit of an edge to to that statement. Uh, I, I think you know subconsciously or whatever. But I, I think from the availability yesterday too with Steve Kerr and Clay Thompson and and you know Marcus Thompson and myself got a little got under Clay's skin a little bit asking him about about shot selection and and he doesn't like hearing it from people who didn't play the game. I think he already had heard it from Steve Kerr at at the film session. That maybe he needed to keep it moving a little bit, uh, as far as you know, not taking every every wide open shot, the whole good shot versus great shot debate. But the one overarching theme, fellas, is this team is confident, and and in a way, I wonder if they're a little too confident mm. in, in that a couple of adjustments, you know, better on the boards, a few less fouls, better shots, and like boom, 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 check, check, check. They got this. Like there is that that unwavering confidence and quiet laser focus that I will say it does seem that that, that this team has. I hope for their sake, and again, I'm I'm an unbiased objector, but I hope for their sake, given the vibe that they've put off, that they're not overestimating their ability to to do things differently and its impact on winning versus Hey, the Kings might be a little bit better than than they themselves have given the Kings credit for, and certainly the Warrior fan base has given the Kings credit for. Wow, Jay, you got me excited for game two. Hey, a random question. I know you were in the uh facility at Golden One, but I got my 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 drink and my food and I'm watching the pregame. And Clay Thompson's contract situation came up from Woj, and he was talking about the max. And I don't know how the cycle works, Jay, but I thought I told Stoney this morning I thought that was odd timing. Did you did you get a chance to to hear about that report? And I thought it was weird timing. I do think it was weird timing. I'm I'm with you, Goo. I, I think it was almost placed in a manner mm. of, hey, let's right as the playoffs are starting let everybody know that this is this if if clay plays well if clay continues to to play you know the the good clay games that he's had for the most part over the last three months that that there's going to be a price for that and and again i think even the way it was worded the expectation is that there will be and again we're not we're not talking the expectation of a a new contract the expectation of a max contract that <laughs> to me I was, like, was the agenda you know like, that's just what like, umbrella fell under because, for me because there's a difference between hey you're going to be getting paid 30 million a year 30 you know which is nice 33 35 million a year and a max which is you know we're talking mid mid 40s i think at that point and 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 beyond and i'm thinking that was a little bit of a of a tone setter i think almost like in the sense of hey this guy's going to eat 
in this series, and, and if he eats in this series, <laughs> and this team makes a run, Day -day. then then payment is due. Wow. And 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 it ain't going to be payment is due thirty thirty five. It's going to be payment is due max, which is a whole different level. And I don't think it really affects anything yeah. game to game. But it, I'm with you, Goo. It was it yeah. was odd timing to be sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. J.D. joining us, John Dickinson, 95.7 uh, The Games reporter. Um, yeah, it kind of had a, li a little inkling of the the, the uh, Draymond Green when Woj reported, or no, The Athletic actually reported that, that he was uh, seeking a max. And then, you know, if, if, if any, here's what I'll say, and then I'll ask a question. If any of that is based in any kind of truth, then the Warriors, I think, do have bigger problems because that shouldn't be, a concern at this point. All right, JD, I got a theory that I'm going to throw at you. Not a theory, but an idea. Um, you know, the Warriors love when they play a guard like uh, Fox to put a Wiggins on him, to put a Peyton on him, and to kind of shadow him up the court. I'm starting to think, you know what? This kid's too quick. He's too fast for those guys. And as good defensively as they are, you can't, you can't shadow him coming up the court because he's going to use that opportunity to beat you. Uh, can Steph Curry guard... De'Aaron Fox, at least in stretches, and forsake the idea of pressuring him in the backcourt and picking him up at the top of the key. I think he can. Now, do you want him to be expending that energy mm. on defense at the potential expense of his offense now that he's 35 years old? I think that's the that's the question there. But but to your point, Steiny, I, I do think that could be a way where if the Warriors aren't as concerned, and I really don't think they are about Fox scoring 40, it, it reminds me, and I think Fox does it in a more efficient way than, than John Morant does. At least he did in game one in the second half. But I think it's a little bit similar to John Morant. Remember the, the first couple of games of that series last year before he got hurt? And he's going for Man. 38 and 46, and and the Warriors are hanging in. I think I think the game in... In Golden 1 was similar to Game 1 and 2 in Memphis. Warriors won one, lost one. Basically the, the same kind of game down the, down the stretch. Uh, and they got the split, and the split ended up, ended up being the difference in the series when the Warriors won all their home games. But I think if you're comfortable with Fox is going to get his, you could do that with Steph. And and allow him to accept the same challenge that Mike Brown has put on De'Aaron Fox. You know that was you know, everybody's kind of wondering what's the plan for Curry and Fox. I think in his career has been an underwhelming defender. He kind of picks his spots defender. But the truth is, it, you know, he is young and athletic and quick and somewhat tireless. And so it it kind of made sense. Like, hey, you 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 want to be the superstar, De'Aaron. Then you got to guard. The, then you got to guard the superstar and go get us forty. And so I think that was an interesting challenge that Mike Brown put on Fox. It's different for Curry because he's older. I, I want to wrap on on this thought as far as that point. I do think the Warriors have to figure out something with their rotation. In that you know, Coach Kerr said yesterday, "Hey, we're playing Steph. We're not going to play him the the forty minutes with one day off in between and all that." I wonder if there's a rotation tweak, and I know I kind of said, well, what if there's two days off in between? Because the next three games, there's two days off. You know, After today, there's two. After game three, there's two. After game four, there's two. And so, and, and Kerr kind of laughed, and he said, well, we'll see. Kind of like, huh, like, yeah, I might do that. But as far as, as far as the rotation pattern, the Kings are set up in this series, guys, to make runs with Curry off the floor because Fox rests at different times than Curry, so he comes back in the game at times where Curry is out. And it's not so much the mano a mano component to it, it's just that Fox going up against more of the Warriors bench players, I think is time where he can really look to dominate and the Kings can look to get in a flow, and the Warriors miss answers on the other end offensively because they get a little bogged down, I think, when Curry's not on the floor. So I think anything that Coach Kerr can do to match those minutes a little bit more to keep the the game secure like it's okay to play Sacramento without Curry on the floor but can you play Sacramento without Curry on the floor while Fox is on the floor and looking to be in supreme attack mode that's one little subtle change that I I would keep an eye on as to if Steve Kerr tinkers with with Curry's rotation in that fact to limit 
the times and the combinations mm. that are on the floor when when De'Aaron is out there and, and Steph isn't. Jay, that's good stuff. I'm going to put a rat on the table because I know the Warriors scored 123 points. They went to the foul line 27 times. But, Jay, I didn't give Sack any credit for being able to stop this playoff version of the Golden State Warriors. And at times, I saw Mike Brown with the box and one. They threw multiple looks at the Warriors. But what great would you give the Kings – as a team, as a whole, defensively Saturday, because I thought at times they made it more difficult than I thought they, they could. I, the one thing, the Kings are not a good defensive team at all. In fact, for the most part, they've been an awful defensive team this year. Don't mistake that for not competing or trying. The Kings compete. There's a difference there. The Kings, and I was telling Steiny this during the game. We were going back and forth, and you know, Steiny's like, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Steiny, yeah. but it's like, hey, the Warriors, Warriors are kind of in control. Kings are showing some signs that they can't do some things. Sabonis struggled. And I said, Steiny, this is how the Kings, have, the Kings have hung around in games all year. They always make their run. It always ends up 120 to 120 with about two minutes left. And they, for whatever reason, have been able to, because of Fox, and they're, they've been a clutch team, they win those games more often than they lose them. And wouldn't you know they were able to do it again. They, they're not a good defensive team, but they compete. Mm. And their energy is good. And they, they, they got after it physically in terms of rebounding the, the basketball, which I think was, was a key. The, the offensive rebounds, the extra shot attempts, that, that was the difference. Like the Warriors were kind of, I think the Warriors were low key happy with their defense in game one, but they couldn't clear the rebound. And when they mm. couldn't clear the rebound, the extra points the Kings got off of that proved to be the, the difference in the game. But the Kings compete. Like, but that's, but that goes that's back to the point, point about. Yeah. About Steve Kerr in that when he says good shots versus great shots and having to make them guard a little deeper in the shot clock, make them move. It was a freaking layup line for the Warriors when they ran their offense and were patient, but there were too many times the, King, the Warriors let the Kings off the hook and the Kings pounced in those moments, and that's how the Kings have beaten good teams this season, home and away, they wait for that moment where you, you slip up for just a two, three minute stretch with the bad shots or the turnovers, and they hit you with a 6 0, 8 0. I couldn't believe it, guys, and I know we're getting up against it. When, when, and I know it was Curry was out and all this different stuff, but for the, to me, the Warriors lost the game Saturday when they were up 10 late in the third. And you look up at the end of the quarter, and they're down one. The fourth quarter really wasn't the – they were they gave it up in that wow. last three minutes, and that was the game. I'm, I looked up at, at the scoreboard. I'm like, how in the hell are the Kings up one? That is trouble because this is exactly the kind of game that the Warriors have lost all year in the regular season and exactly the kind of game that the Kings have won all year in the regular season. And wouldn't you know, again, it, it, it played out the same way in game one. JD, going to be a lot of fun tonight. Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to play uh, uh, producer, and I'd like to get you on tomorrow too, if we can. Okay, you, you got it. Uh oh, Evans, I'll be ready to roll. No, Evans, hey, Jay, man. my We're prediction: special. forty sits next uh, yeah. next to Vivek tonight. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I hope I just hope that calms down. I I, I just it hope was it all, I didn't like I hope, it. Yeah. I just hope cooler heads prevail in that whole situation, and and it's found that that there can be some some friendly common ground found because I I, I guess that's it's just done the whole thing was just unfortunate on a number of different levels.